There have been a lot of updates in the AI space, especially regarding 3D and video technology. And today we're talking about three major projects. These projects are more than just productivity tools and the creators and early adopters are going to make a ton of money because these tools can reach way more industries than you can imagine. These projects are some of the earliest to the show and I wanted to share my research with you. AI is changing business every single day. And if there's anything that I've learned, it's that you really, really want an Etsy store challenge challenge update video, which is coming, just be patient. But I've also learned that with any new technology, the early adopters are usually the ones that make the most amount of money. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now to me, this is one of the coolest projects from a company called Blockade Labs. And when you come to theblockadelabs.com, you can immediately start exploring some of the worlds that they've created. All you have to do is click and drag your mouse around. Now this project will come more full circle in a minute, but I just wanted to mention it now because of how easy it is to use. But instead of explaining what this is, let me just show you what it does. So I'll just click on Conjure Your World and they've got a few art styles that I can choose from. So I just have to put a prompt into the prompt section. So I'm gonna start with a frozen, frozen waterfall. I accidentally typed froze waterfall, but that's okay. And just hit generate. And after a few seconds, it loads a completely unique world. We'll just let it generate. And as we can look around, you can see we get a, not exactly what we prompted, but a very beautiful, 360 degree view image based on our prompt. Now we can actually click this little drop down and select one of a bunch of different styles. So maybe let's try a surreal style, change it to frozen waterfall and generate a new one. Now from here, you can see it's a completely different vibe from the last image, partly because we modified the prompt, but also we gave it a new styling. So let's try a mushroom landscape, mushroom landscape with burning planets in the distance. And then let's do a different style. Let's do the fantasy landscape and give this a second to generate as well. And here you go. So we can see a beautiful and honestly, very beautiful mushroom landscape with some planets in the distance, kind of a sci-fi vibe. Now, as of right now, this is only a 360 degree image and it's not actually a 3D world meaning your character can't walk along the paths or do anything like that. It can't interact with the environment. Now, what's going to be really cool is when we're able to take something like one of these scenes and actually transform it into a 3D world that a character could explore. Think about what this could do if you're creating things like video games or applications for the metaverse. When we're able to combine these blockade renders with something like virtual reality, video gaming, or even just video entertainment, knowing what it is and how to use it is going to give those of us who are staying ahead of the curve a significant edge when this technology is officially released. Now, implementing these kind of 360 worlds into any kind of usable media isn't here yet. This is completely just a proof of concept. It still could be a couple years out, but even considering how programs like ChatGPT have grown in just five months since its release, hopefully you can see where applications like this are going too. Now this next project is from a company called Spline. Now they've been around for a while and that's okay because you don't have to know everything about Spline. All you have to know is that you can use it to build 3D shapes, animate 3D objects and add physics to those 3D objects. They've got a lot of examples and different projects that people have built. For example, this kid's playground. If I just click on it and wait for it to load, I can click the play button and using the keys on a keyboard, I can kind of drive this ball around and interact with a lot of the other 3D objects. I can knock over blocks, I can get pushed around by blocks and I can go through tunnels and different things like that. Now, they also have some other examples like this truck that I can drive. I can drive it around and knock over a bunch of the trees. I knocked over the tent. And then they've got a different example showing off some logic where if you get close to the door, the doors will automatically open for this bunny. And he also does a little bit of a backflip when you make him jump. So people have used this to build games, make product mockups, and all kinds of 3D projects. Now, these are all really cool, but you do still have to have somewhat of a 3D design skill. You have to know how to bring your ideas to life using their 3D tools, which are very simple to use, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a learning curve. Now, that's where Spline AI comes into play. They're introducing the Spline AI, which will allow you to create similar scenes to what we just saw in the demo, just by using text prompts. In their promotional video, you can see that they ask it to make 20 random cubes and spheres in the X and Z plane. So it generates that for them and then it makes all of them meshes and makes them smaller. And then it moves the meshes up. Then they tell it to rotate all of the meshes randomly and meshes are just 3D objects. And then it adds, a, it adds physics to all of them and then it makes a 
plane on the bottom and it drops them and you can see how they interact with that plane that they fell on. Now, it tells them to make a star, make the corners round and add a bevel to it. So this can be very practical if you don't know at all what you're doing. Instead of trying to mess with all of the tools, you can just use text to convert your idea into shapes and objects. On this next example, they ask for a car next to a tree. Again, they go over this so fast, but they build this car and tree scene and then they add physics to the car to actually be able to drive the car around. They really highlight this color palette changing ability where you'll just select everything and change all of the color palettes. And here, I thought this one was really cool as well. They delete all of the color and then they add just a specific area light, like a purple area light to their text. So that's just another cool feature. Now on the announcement page, they show a few more examples. For example, they prompt it with create a grid of eight cubes and it pops up eight little cubes on the right hand side. So you can see it kind of working in action. And they show the edit ability, randomize the cubes. So this kind of just randomizes the location and orientation and size of the cubes. And then they add physics to the scene and all of the cubes just drop to the bottom. And then finally, stylize your creation with AI textures. And so they're using a text prompt to just create or add a different texture to their objects. So they show a few fire, grass, water, concrete, brick, all different kinds of textures using AI. And if you've ever tried to do something like that before, you'll know what an absolute headache it is to try and add textures or anything like that in a different program like Blender. The AI side of their software is brand new. And so I'm just thinking about what happens when it reaches its mid journey version five stage and it's creating super high quality 3D objects from a simple prompt. Now for a little comparison, I generated this red car in the first version of Mid Journey, which came out just over nine months ago, and it barely resembles a red car. However, when I ran the same prompt with Mid Journey version five, you can see that the results are at least slightly better. So just after nine months, they were able to improve from this red car to this one. So a very decent improvement. Now, the reason that we're talking so much about AI and 3D technology is because of how many industries it affects. Besides the obvious industries like architecture, TV and entertainment, the automotive industry, e-commerce, and then running simulations, it can actually affect other industries like video game creation. Since I mostly do e-commerce, this could actually result in a fair amount of changes. For example, doing a 3D augmented reality for people to try on clothes before they buy it, or augmented reality for furniture to make sure that it will fit in your room. Amazon's already been doing this quite a bit. Marketing and advertising is also going to change quite a bit, and I'll show you an example of this later in the video. The project we just looked at called Spline isn't there quite yet, and so that's why we have to talk about the next AI project called Luma Labs. First, let me just show you an example of some of the stuff that they're doing. Now, at first, this kind of just looks like a cool fast video zooming around this red moped, but don't be fooled. This isn't an actual red moped. This is actually just a 3D object. As you can see from his prompt, he scanned and animated this completely on his iPhone. Now I'll get into the technicals in a second, but here's another video where they're kind of zooming around this little park area. And it kind of looks like FPV drone footage if you've ever seen any of that. But what's cool is both of these have been 3D scenes. Here's another one of a guy playing pool, kind of has this cool zoom in effect. Then it pans around him. It goes down and through his arm, which is a, just a pretty cool style, I guess. It zooms around him and it hits the dartboard. So it's doing all of this camera motion just from a single 3D set. So here's an actual McDonald's ad that they ran and it's kind of going around this little McDonald's play set. It goes through the guy's arm and then it goes through the McDonald's Happy Meal box up onto the other side where it's a real video. So it kind of goes from a 3D set into a real video and that's how they create the ad. And honestly, a very cool effect. So what those videos are is just a 3D environment or 3D objects and then they're using a software from Luma to keyframe a virtual camera around those objects. So the first way that you can get these type of scans is by downloading the app and you can use the Capture Anywhere to just make a simple scan with your iPhone. Then you can keyframe your virtual camera and it can spin around your object like this picnic table. 
or this castle that you see. So some of the community submissions are this park cube, which somebody scanned and thought it looked cool, and it turns it into a 3D object. Another example from Luma themselves is this simple chair. So they just took some photos of it or a scan with their iPhone and they uploaded it and now it's a 3D object. They've also got a text to 3D option for people who are out of the waitlist and joined the beta. So you can type in a prompt like you see here and then you'll get a rough 3D object based on the prompt. But probably the coolest way to get these 3D objects is by using their video or image to 3D API. So if we look at some of their examples, for this first example, they've just taken three photos of a Lego set and it converts it into a 3D object. Here's another example of a chair. So they just uploaded these three photos of the chair, use the Luma API, and it converts it into a 3D object of that exact chair. They do it with another chair. So that's the chair that we just looked at. And then they even do it with this type of neighborhood. So they upload three photos and it's able to pretty accurately recreate a 3D version of the whole neighborhood, which is pretty insane. And for only a dollar per scene, that's really not bad at all. Some of their ideas for how to use this are for game art. Obviously you can create 3D characters and import them into a video game or e-commerce and AR. So they kind of mentioned the same idea, get lifelike 3D models in unmatched quality for your website and AR experience in minutes for your entire inventory. So obviously a pretty good selling point. It gets even crazier than that because on Luma's main page, they have a feature video from the Corridor crew on YouTube. You should definitely go check them out. Their video is dope. They just have a video going over a bunch of different experiments with this new technology. A couple of the ones I wanted to highlight were they showed off how to use their iPhone to scan their room and then they're able to replace what's on the other side of this blue door using Luma's AI to make it look like a portal to a completely different space. They're just mapping it out using an iPhone. And then they even go on to show off if you're filming your footage like a circus clown, because you're transforming it into a whole 3D scene, you can just reposition that vertical camera or the virtual camera rather to get perfectly smooth footage. I'm not going to spoil their whole video. You should go check it out after you're done with this one. But before you go do that, I have to talk about one more announcement that Luma just made the other day. The most notable change that Luma has just made is their announcement of the Unreal Engine plugin. So in their promo video, they show off a little bit of what it can do with this robot walking up the stairs and then sitting down on the couch. They've got a couple different scenes to show you how easy it will be to edit, add motion, and what some of the renders might look like. They even include some Casa Bonita lore. And honestly, besides the robot, that promo video didn't look too great. But I think this is going to change into the future. If you don't know what Unreal Engine 5 is, it's a completely unrelated and not AI software company that allows video creators and game developers to render out very highly complex and realistic looking graphics on their computer. If you've ever seen Fortnite or Baby Yoda, that's what's making it look so nice. So here's why I wanted to share all of this with you. These types of tools are going to make people a lot of money. Instead of looking at it from the perspective that AI is going to steal from a lot of people, I actually think it's just going to allow for more creation a lot quicker. If I come up with an idea for a video game, an animation, or a show, if I'm able to quickly generate some 3D characters or a good scene for it, that's a lot more productive than just giving up on the idea because I don't know where to start. This type of technology is going to bring a lot more ideas to life. A different example could be if you sell in e-commerce. You can snap some photos of your product and people can try it on virtually using AR or place the table in their living room to make sure it will fit using the augmented reality or even interact with those objects virtually in VR. Or a different example could be if you have an idea for a short video or movie, you can use AI to create some of those 3D characters and scenes. And down the road, once this AI software gets good enough, you'll be able to actually use those 3D assets that you're creating in your projects. The ideas that I've mentioned in this video don't even scratch the surface of what you'll be able to do with these programs. So make sure you check them out for yourself. If McDonald's is already making ads and Unreal is already allowing plugins, this is the type of stuff that you want to pay attention to. So yeah, I just wanted to make this video to keep you up to date on the research that I'm already doing. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you subscribe and follow me online and I'll see you next time.